Hello everyone Zombies Cat here, today we're going to tell a story about bullying in schools. Mian, while she copes to the pressures of her final examinations, finds herself bullied because of a single act of kindness. One day, when a female classmate tragically jumps to her death, Mian is the only one to approach and cover the girl's body with her own uniform, while others watch passively and even take photos. This act of compassion marks her as a target for the bullies. She endures being humiliated, doused in red ink, pelted with toilet paper, and photographed, echoing the torment suffered by the girl she tried to help. Nian, hoping to escape the abuse, focuses on her studies, believing that success in the college entrance exam will bring relief. However, her hope is dashed when the police, investigating the girl's death, request her cooperation. Terrified, Nian remains silent, but her tormentors, fearing exposure, escalate their attacks. <laughs> <laughs> Lai is a two-faced student from a wealthy family, appearing well-behaved and understanding in front of adults while mercilessly bullying his classmates. However, Nian is from a single-parent family, where her mother sells masks to repay debts, leaving Nian with the burden of responsibility. Without the support of a strong family, she must navigate her challenges alone. Nian struggles to hold back tears, forced to bear pressures beyond her years, but the situation doesn't ease up. Lai seems determined to torment her further. As they leave school, they pursue Nian, hitting and kicking her. They spread rumors about her mother among their classmates, leading to Nian's isolation. Purposefully, Lai throws a ball at Nian and continues to hurl insults at her. Stop doing this to me! As Nian begins to resist, the bullies escalate their torment. Facing the arrogant demeanor of Lai, Nian is engulfed by a mix of anger, resentment, and helplessness. Clinging to her last shred of hope, Nian calls Officer Zheng and recounts the bullying she has endured from her classmates. The police question Lai, the main perpetrator, but to everyone's surprise, she remains unnervingly calm, showing no remorse whatsoever. Officer Zheng is taken aback by Lai's apparent lack of compassion at such a young age. However, cases of school bullying are complex, especially when dealing with underage students and lacking direct evidence, making it difficult to initiate judicial proceedings. Despite this, Officer Jing assures Nian that he will do his best to protect her from any retaliation. Unfortunately, when Nian finds herself surrounded once again and attempts to call Officer Jing for help, she discovers that the call won't connect. Desperate, she seeks refuge in a dumpster before finally managing to escape. <laughs> Adults always have their own things to do, and it's hard for them to keep promises to children. Nian can no longer trust adults, and she doesn't dare to go back to her empty home. When she feels most helpless, she remembers Bay. One day after school, she passes by the scene of a fight, where many people are beating one person. Nian has experienced the same thing before, so she reports it to the police. But instead of being afraid, the gangsters drag her over, snatch her purse, break her cell phone, and force her to kiss the beaten teenager. Nian trembles as she approaches and intervenes to save the boy named Bei. She regrets meddling and holds deep contempt for the delinquent. However, she is taken aback when the next day, Bei voluntarily returns the money and helps her fix her cell phone. This behavior is entirely unexpected, challenging Nian's perception of him as a troublemaker. In a world where trust is scarce, Nian finds herself instinctively turning to Bei when in need. The first time Bei saw Nian, he recognized her simplicity and kindness, along with the promising future he couldn't fully pursue. So, he promises to protect Nian and even secretly warns Lai not to harm her. From then on, no matter where Nian goes, there is always a hooded figure watching over her from afar. Meanwhile, in the shadows she doesn't see, Bei continues to navigate the murky world. The two forms a stark contrast, one bright and hopeful, the other dark and devoid of light. Gradually, their wounded hearts begins to find solace in each other. Observing Bei return home repeatedly with injuries, Nian couldn't help but express concern. Bei, who always bleeds but never sheds tears, finds tears welling in his eyes this time. Nian is the first person to ask if he is in pain. It's revealed that Bei was abandoned by his parents when he was young, leaving him to fend for himself on the streets. Meeting Nian illuminates his dark life with a ray of light. As long as Nian succeeds, Bei doesn't consider himself a failure. As they spend more time together, Nian becomes increasingly caring towards Bei. When he wants to go out to fight, she stands at the door to stop him. The two keep each other warm and share moments of happiness. However, as teenagers, they are still unable to fully save each other. One day, Bei is detained as a suspect and fails to pick up Nian from school. Lai finally catches Nian alone, and her long-standing resentment erupts in full force. She lashes out at Nian, cuts her hair, and takes pictures of her. When Bei rushes home, he only sees the rag doll like Nian and her torn notes. 
Bei grabs a knife and rushes out, but is held back by Nian. Finally, upon the college entrance exam, Bei watches Nian enter the exam room. Meanwhile, a female corpse is found on a construction site in the suburbs, and it turns out to be Lai. All clues point to Nian, and a video of her last bullying session surfaces. Without waiting for the college entrance exams to end, Nian is brought in for interrogation. Since there's no evidence, the police can only release Nian temporarily and assign two officers to keep watch over her. Early the next morning, Bei is unable to personally escort Nian to the examination center. However, he decorates Nian's path with small flowers. Just after the exam concludes, when the police officers aren't paying attention, Bei abducts Nian and makes the ultimate sacrifice for her at the derelict building. It turns out that after taking the photos, Lai realized she had gone too far and apologized to Nian. Nian no longer pursued the matter, only wanting to keep Lai away from her. However, Lai persisted, insisting on going to Beijing with Nian and pestering her to remain lifelong friends. This sickened Nian. No amount of apologies could undo the harm caused. Lai's chatter became unbearable torture for Nian. In a fit of anger, Nian pushed her, causing Lai to fall down the stairs and die. To help Nian evaded blame, Bei left incriminating evidence on Lai's body. He even orchestrated a scene, pretending to be a repeat rapist and falsely confessing to accidentally killing Lai while attempting to commit the crime. Given his previous stalking of Nian, it's easy for authorities to believe the charges against him. As long as Nian has a future, Bei doesn't consider himself a failure. Officer Xing accesses the surveillance footage and indeed finds that Bei had followed Nian. His intuition tells him that the relationship between the two is not simple. However, no matter how much he interrogates them, Bei and Nian remain silent, insisting that they do not know each other. As a result, Bei is sentenced to imprisonment, while Nian enters a Beijing university with a high score. Officer Zheng doesn't want Nian to carry guilt for the rest of her life and seeks a way to uncover the truth. He falsely claims that Bei has been sentenced to death in an attempt to pressure Nian into revealing the real story. Isn't he underage? He lied to you. One sentence causes Nian to instantly collapse, exposing her relationship with Bei. Nian resents why Officer Zheng refuses to let her go and shoulder Bei's hopes and live a good life. However, Officer Zheng insists it's for their own good. The moment Nian turns herself in, she feels more relaxed than ever, and Bei looks at her through the glass, smiling as if relieved. Even if they both go to jail, they have no regrets because they have fought side by side against the world. In the days to come, they won't have to carry another person's life on their backs. They can live a free and wonderful life. Eventually, as an adult, Nian works as a teacher at an English training center. Bullying still exists in schools, but she does what she can to protect her students. Bei still walks behind her, no longer needing to hide in the shadows. Better Days is a Chinese movie about teen bullying with a love story ending. The story sets in the context of the Chinese Gaokao. For nearly 10 million high school students, this two-day national college entrance exam will determine where and if they get to study. It is not uncommon for the fates of entire families to hinge on the results. Like so many others, Nian has been focused on preparing for the exam at the exclusion of everything else and is all alone. A classmate has committed suicide and she has become the target of relentless bullying. Fate brings her together with small-time criminal Bay, and the two of them seal a pact. School violence is a topic we can't ignore as we grow up. Even if you weren't the one being bullied, you must have heard about or witnessed bullying at some point. We often fail to consider what school education is trying to teach us. In East Asian learning environments, where students face heavy testing and immense academic pressure, teenagers with immature minds are prematurely indoctrinated with the concept of class elimination for self-preservation. It's all too easy for things to spiral out of control with the dogma of the law, of the jungle for the abusers and egoism for self-preservation for the bystanders. Education is not solely the responsibility of teachers and schools but also of every family. It's like the question Yan asked when confronted by the female police officer. So if this is really the way the world is, are you still willing to give birth to your child? Society isn't always rosy. Do you have the confidence to be a competent parent, ensuring that your child can face any situation and still turn towards the sun? Growing up is an enduring theme, yet there's no single lesson in education that teaches children how to navigate it. Perhaps the director doesn't have the answer either, so they tell us, growing up is like diving. Close your eyes and don't think about anything. Just jump into the river. There will be sand, rocks, and clams in the river. Through these trials and tribulations, you will naturally mature. It may be painful and sad, but that's the essence of growing up for all of us. Thanks for joining Zombies Cat on this movie. Abduct the subscribe button, hit the bell, and stay me out of this world. Until next time, keep those reels rolling. Zombies Cat signing off.